Welcome into the lab presented by Wolverine. Guys, it's game week. It's right around the corner. I'm itching to see this Wolverine team, this this 2024 Wolverine team. Now they are the defending national champions starting this Saturday against Fresno State. And get really excited to have our guest, Greg Crippen, on. A guy that, Greg, I, I can't wait to talk to you. and We'll get into a ton of stuff. Uh, just wanted to touch base with you how your body's feeling. Uh, I know you've dealt with some injuries. I believe you had a wrist injury a few years back. Uh, you know, you just went through a new, another camp with Sharon Moore. You're up mm -hmm. against that elite Michigan defensive line. High level overview. How are you feeling? What's your level of excitement now going into the season? Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, obviously uh, can't, our camps are difficult I mean, you know, it's great because, you know, we're just going to only help us get ready for the season. So, yeah, I'm feeling really good right now. I mean, you know, as good as, you know, obviously throughout camp, we're kind of getting banged up a little bit, you know, like as Coach Harbaugh called it, it was a callus, you know, you kind of got to build a callus. And I think yep. they did a great job of that. And now it's, you know, we've eased up a little bit last week. And you know, now we're just getting ready for, uh, for the game on Saturday. I want to just cut right through the noise and i just want to ask you something i've been excited to ask you for a few years now as you know i got into the media space this will be my third year and the timeline lines up because i'm at practice and they say man we like greg crippen and then olu olu Atimi comes in and then i'm saying hey we love greg crippen and then drake nugent comes in and in in today's world of nil it's like guys would leave like it's like not even a question uh and yet man you've you continue to work you continue to develop uh I, I just would love to hear why why what this experience has been like for you why stay at michigan uh mm -hmm. if you could kind of just kind of peel back the layers for us about why that was your choice of action yeah i mean i had i had a good amount of offers you know from other schools and uh you know i want to be a michigan man and you know michigan's you know very important to me and I you know I want to I want to you know I feel like kind of quit if you leave you know I don't want to quit and I want to keep working on something I want to you know I want to do I want to play at Michigan I want to you know I want to I guess be on the field and to win a national championship and um yeah I just want to bring bring the school and you know uh you know more wins and yeah hopefully go on you know have a great and full career and yeah just want to it's a big goal of mine What's what's some of the things that you feel you've been able to? What, what are the areas you've developed in then? Just just at, with these past few years and and staying and, and being coached by Sharon Moore and now Grant Newsome, you know how have you really changed as a player now being one of the veterans in the room? Yeah, I mean, um, I felt like I felt prepared coming from IMG just technique wise and you know a little bit you know uh, IQ like on the field and stuff like that, but I've learned so much about football the last couple of years I and mean, I feel very comfortable like you know reading a defense and you know like what to do you know wherever the defense shows and obviously I feel very comfortable with the plays as well and you know obviously and also technique wise I mean just you know you know getting better at that every day and you know coach Moore and coach Newsom are the best you know coach Moore is the best line coach in the country and you know coach Newsom you know having him for the last year a little over a year a little over half a year now and he's unbelievable and yeah just uh i, I know that all, all all they do is care about us and you know just getting us better i i would love to i could i i think because of social media and the access uh the cat's out of the bag in a sense and it's learn people are learning how smart offensive linemen are like i, I think the low-hanging fruit is oh big offensive linemen like got to move defensive linemen mm -hmm. but you guys are so smart and you're talking mm -hmm. about reading a defense like what do you mean uh, o-line has to read a defense yeah. uh I, you know if you could kind of break down a little bit of what you're what you're <clears throat> looking for when you get up to the line of scrimmage uh whether it's the run game or maybe you're looking for some pressure cues would love yeah. to to hear you kind of teach that a little bit here and, and uh explore that those areas yeah, so as the run game goes, I have to make the initial call. So I I'll, I'll, first I look at the defensive front if they're in a three down front, which is you know head up nose. Um, you know, depending on the play, it, I make a call. And if or if it's a four down front, if it's the same play, it's probably a different call. You know, and I have to make the initial call. It's, and then it goes down the line between each offensive lineman, and you know I have to also make the point, the ID, or where you know. 
to tell where people are going. You know, that, that, that's in the run game and the pass game. I have to be able to read, read a defense. And, and I know a certain uh, our, our six man protections, you know, with the running back, I can, I have the opportunity to point, you know, the, we call it the most dangerous man. And I have to read the defense, you know, see where the safeties are, see what you know, levels the linebackers are on and uh, see if the safety is topped, you know, one high, you know, that's, that's something that I look at, you know, I have to study throughout the week and um, yeah, I mean, it's you know, a lot, not, I like it cause I can be able to control everything yeah. and um, you know, well to then all play as one as off the line. I just want to piggyback off that because you 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 say it's so nonchalant, like it's it's. But you're getting up as an offensive lineman. You're you're looking at the safeties. You got to know what the safeties mm-hmm. are. That affects. I mean, I know we'd have one high, two high checks. So you want to be able to anticipate uh, some of those checks as well as reading what the defense is. And mm-hmm. it's crazy that you have a playbook with a hundred different plays. Yeah. But you could call one run play, and it will play out five plus ways based on the front, yeah. odd or even, based on the safety rotation, based on into the boundary. Could the corner come? There, there's so much communication that goes on up front, mm-hmm. uh, and, and with the quarterback battle this year, I'm not asking you to name it, but what what what's the communication been like with those guys? Uh, are are you making the calls? Are they making the calls? What how, how does that work in Ann Arbor? Um, yeah, I mean, mo- I feel like most of the time in the run game, I mean, the offensive line make the calls, or um, in the pass game, you know, I could, I can make a point, and it doesn't happen too often. But the quarterback can then, you know, tell us, oh, hey, like go here, like point, and then they point, the, point the guy they think is blitzing, and I will then have to um, re, re- and then I have to then re ID to the guy because it, 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 it's hard because the quarterback could say, oh, go here, and then. The final almost like is like the final say is like okay yeah. I, then I have to say okay to then make sure everyone everyone is on the same page. That's what I mean. It, you're you're never wrong as long as you're on the same mm-hmm. page, right? Like that's what a coach would always say is is mm-hmm. as long as you play as one, you're never wrong, and that that's where the the mm-hmm. key uh, communication comes in. And you know when you say the mic point, you're not just talking about the middle guy. Like you're not just you're not look counting the backers and say here's the middle guy. I looked at the Georgia Tech game and they would do a ton of slot motion, okay, bringing the nickel back into the box. Yeah. So the mic might become the Sam in that instance, and you might have to make a push call or whatever. And, and, <clears throat> and just the the dynamics of offensive line play and communication has always been fascinating to me, and I just encourage our viewers to to watch that this weekend and going forward. And uh, with that, you got to have a good relationship with the guys in the room. And um, even though there's some new faces starting across the offensive line, you know these guys, right? Like you've played a ton of ball. What what's the what's the relationship like with your fellow O linemen? What is it like being in those meetings and? Uh, do you do you live with the guys off the field? Can you just give us a, a look into your world as a Michigan offensive lineman? Yeah, so I, I, I live with Andrew Gentry. He's my roommate. So yeah, it's perfect. Uh, we work really well, well together as roommates. And uh, yeah, I feel like offensive line wise, I mean, we've you know in the past we've hung out you know a little bit, but you know we were we were close. But I feel like right now we've been hanging out a lot more. We've like done well at trying to hang out together more after football or like on a day off. And, um, you know, our goal is to at least do something every week together. Um, cause I feel like it's only going to help us, you know, get closer. And then, you know, I, we've, we've seen that like it, it only can help us, you know, mm-hmm. on the football field. And that's, that's our main goal every day is to get better and, you know, play as, play as one and, you know, win as many, as much games as we can. The lap podcast is brought to you by Wolverine boots and apparel which represents that blue collar work ethic whenever and wherever it shows up, whether that's on a job site or on the football field and a really cool chance to say thank you to our sponsors, Wolverine. This is a limited edition as you guys, I'm going to try to get it right here for you guys. You can see it limited edition work boots. It is called the thousand mile boot commemorative really chance to reflect on team 144 Obviously, you can see the blue leather. You got the maze stitching right here, the block M right here in the middle. 
Uh, so there's a ton of details, of course, that represent just a really quality boot. They smell great. They feel great in your hands. Um, and it's a chance to you know, reflect as we're on the precipice of a new season, reflect on the principles that represent Wolverine and that represent the Wolverine football team uh, that allowed that team last year to go 15 and 0, to win the Big Ten title, to win the national title, uh, do something that had never been done in Michigan history, which is 15 wins in a season. So I uh, want to take a chance, say thank you to our sponsor, to Wolverine, to let you guys know about this limited edition boot. Uh, really represents perfectly the community, uh, the brand Wolverine, and, and you guys as part of our fan base as well. So uh, chance for you guys to get your hands on it. Uh, you can head over to Wolverine.com slash blue collar. Who's organizing it? Like, are you organ? Who's who's leading the group chat saying, "Let's go to beat ups tonight" or Chipotle? I think it's a mixture. I, I said, you know, I've organized a couple of things. You know, um, pre, you know, he or him. You know, like some of those guys like that. We we we've organized things, you know, in the past, and um, yeah, but I think um, I think it's important to us, and we all like each other enough to do it as well. So, which is obviously important. So, yeah, I know I know that some of the guys did something. Then other night, Saturday, I was a little busy, but, you know, yeah, that's just great. I mean, it's only going to help us. I'm going to hit you with a hard-hitting question here because uh, I saw a quote that uh, Miles Hinton was asked uh, if there was a nickname for this offensive line, uh, and he said Invictus. And it sounded like there were some guys that didn't know what that meant. Uh, was curious. <laughs> Did did you know what Inv Invictus meant? Did you – is that do – you, does that – uh nickname work for you guys yeah so we talked about it because you know as a whole offense donna donna van edwards wanted to you know ask us you know as off the line like what's our what's our word you know like what's our almost like you know because we have our as often as we have our pillars you know like the things that we want to make sure we get done every day and every play and you know we came up and miles came up with invictus is just you know which means like just dominant dominance you know every play and you know it's i think it's that's great because that's you know as that's what coach uh, newsome you know instills in us every day and you know as off the line that's that's our goal every yeah. play it's beautiful i i really enjoyed it so those are the fun things good. you get at this time uh this time of year uh no one would have a better perspective than you going up against this defensive front and going up against these these different blitz packages mm -hmm. uh give us give us an inside look you know when you're lining up in your stance and you see kenneth grant and mason graham right there i mean what how what, what's going through your mind like how perfect do you have to be to win against those guys yeah i mean i feel like like obviously they're very very good and you know Sometimes you go in there like, oh, shoot, I have to go against them. But then you realize that, like, okay, this is great. You know, because like, then on Saturday, so when I go against someone else, it's only going to be that much easier. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, for me, it's just trying not to do too much. You know, sometimes you try to do something different with your hands or you try to do just something. And then and you, it's not what you normally do. And then it kind of it just messes you up more. You try to do too much. And then, then you get beat. So I feel like it's probably like at least when I go against them, I try to just like remember my technique and you know play as hard as I can because I have to because they're very good players and yeah. Basically, you, you like you have got to be technically sound against these guys. Like you're not just gonna fall into beating these guys. Even even a guy like Rayshon Benny, just a big dude, yeah. I, mm -hmm. which. Of course, that benefits you throughout the season. But how often are you, you know, it? the way I understand it, and this has been true for a while, is Sharon liked to rotate guys. Grant Newsom, I would imagine, likes to rotate guys. Like, he'll put you in different positions just because that's the way the season goes. Guys get injured. Mm -hmm. Guys get beat up. Uh, how often or how much continuity is, in the, is with this offensive line group? Are you – finding guys to your left and right are different fairly often and, and how much does that affect your your play uh going up against the d-line yeah i mean we've had position battles and stuff like that so rotation we've been rotating you know people have been rotating a little bit and you know having to you know people are maybe once someone's out for a day you know not serious but like you know then other people have to play a position and um 
Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's only good because, you know, you never know how it's going to happen throughout the season. You know, God forbid no one gets hurt. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just always being prepared. I mean, look at Carson Barnhart. I mean, he's played so many positions throughout his career here. And, you know, I, I believe it's only going to was only it's only benefiting him and that going to benefit him in the NFL. And obviously it benefited us as well. Yeah. Oh my gosh. At the next level, you, you simply can't, you dress seven or eight and six, seven, eight got to really be able to play, you know, yeah, exactly. My, my roommate, my rookie year in the NFL, this guy, Elijah Wilkinson, just an absolute specimen of a human, but he played left tackle, right tackle. He played every position, but center. That mm -hmm. dude will have a 10 year, 12 year career just because you, that's so valuable yeah. when mm -hmm. there's roster limits. So, yeah, exactly. uh, you know, you're just putting chips away. Um, okay, so Donovan Edwards, the cover of NCAA, special. Khalil, Khalil <laughs> Mullings, excited to see him. But mm -hmm. then you got a bunch of young running backs that are all unique in, in, in different body sizes, different run styles. Uh, can, can What can you share with us about some of these younger guys, uh, stuff that maybe excites you and, and maybe who you're looking forward to see get some opportunities this year? Yeah, I mean – Ben Hall. Ben Hall is a, a great running back, and he runs really hard. You know, he's you know very strong, and uh, I think he's done had a great camp. I think Jordan Marshall has also done very well. He's running really hard, really hard this camp, and you know, I feel like a lot of the those those two guys do a lot of the when there's live periods, they like they're the ones who are mostly most are getting the ball the most of the time, and um, yeah, I've only seen them go forward, so that's. So obviously that's what you want uh, for a running back, and obviously as an offensive line, we need to make sure that we're um, giving him the the best opportunity to move, uh, get as many yards as he can. And yeah, I feel like those guys have only you know helped themselves through our camp, and I'm excited to see um, see how well they do this season. The competition seems really high across the roster. You know, like it, the the. The, the media pundits are like, man, they're replacing a ton. And, but then you look at it like, man, the competition is deep. Uh, even at the receiver position, uh, you know, you mentioned the competition across the offensive line. Uh, kind of comparing to other teams, uh, is this one of the more competitive off seasons you've been a part of? Definitely, definitely. Because, I mean, obviously people say, I mean, yeah, we, we have lost a good amount of guys to the NFL, which is great. You know, and, um, I think an example I like to give to people is, you know, some of the Alabamas and the Georgias, like in the past, like they've they've lost a lot of guys every year and they've only had have had success the next season because, you know, the people who were, you know, under them have stepped up and play can play just as well as they can uh the guys ahead of them before that. And you know, I feel like that's how we are we are. And, you know, maybe some of the guys last year didn't play as much, but now they're stepping up and being able to make their own name like those guys did last year. And um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of competition, you know, just seeing because, you know, there's a lot of good people who haven't had as much experience as maybe in the past because, um, you know, we have lost as many guys, but, you know, I think it's only going to help us out. You know, it, it pushes us to be better every day. This is that, and just to that point, this is a big year in that sense is this, this is the ultimate test where, you know, anyone can do it once. But can you reload and do it mm -hmm. consistently? Uh, yeah. All of a sudden, it becomes undeniable. You know what 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 you have going with your roster. Uh, just kind of before we let you go here, I played with Grant Newsom. Uh, I know sh last year, Jim Coach Harbaugh said, "Hey, Sharon Moore will be a head coach one day." He also said the same about Grant Newsom. Yeah. Uh, so he's now your offensive line coach. Uh, what what's his leadership like? You know how how is he as a teacher and a leader in your offensive line meetings? Yeah, I would say he's you know I feel like Coach Moore was more of a um just um what's the right word just put like they're both pushing us to be better. But Coach Newsom is very detailed. He's a very detailed uh, coach. You know I uh, I think that's the, the best word I can use for him and. You know, Coach Coach Moore is definitely more like you know, um, uh, just pushing like just uh, vocal in his words, just like pushing us to be better every day. And you know, I think they're they're very similar coaching styles, but a little bit different. And I think you know both both ways of you know only made us really good a really good offensive of line. And you know, so far with Coach Newsom, I, I feel like we've only been getting 
you know, we we're at a really good place right now. Yeah, man, I, I just I, I'm really excited for him as I mean, he's shot up the coaching ladder, uh, you know, yeah. great year. He's, he's my GA my freshman year. So so it's come full. You guys have spent that much time together. Yeah. <laughs> How has he grown? Like what's what's different? Of course, he's the position coach versus GA. Uh, yeah. What's that been like? Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's just the biggest things is I mean, as a GA is a lot more of, you know, having to do a little bit more of the dirty work and, you know, typing things up and, you know, creating um, scout cards or, you know, just stuff like that. But, you know, at, you know, the GA, you're just learning everything. And I feel like, you know, he's only just kept on, you know, growing his knowledge for the game. And you know, now it's just, you know, like being able to, you know, tell, like to know everything, but now they be able to tell your, your, your players how to do it right. And, I mean, I feel like it's an unbelievable job. You got to know it so well that you can teach it on the spot. I mean, that's a yeah. that's a different level of uh, mastery. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Well, la last question for me here is just, uh, you know, as, as you as you project out to this season and the opportunity you have individually and the opportunity the team has, uh, I don't know if you write down your goals, but kind of what what are you most looking forward to in this year? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think I heard you say um, at one time is uh, just, you know, proving ourselves right. You know, not, you know, we really we don't even listen to outside noise at all. I mean, I don't really care who, you know, if I only care what people say in the building. You know, that's only, that's only like word of mouth I even care about, you know, listening to or, um, yeah, just proving ourselves right and, you know, you know, how, how making sure that our standard is, you know, up, uh, kept every day. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's our biggest goal this year. I mean, you know, obviously it's to win the national championship and, um, and, but I mean, we gotta, we gotta be able to, you know, go through the process. We can't just, as coach Moore said before, you know, that process over prize. And, um, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's our goal every day is to live to our standard uh, every day and keep getting better. And, you know, like, you know, we have our goals, but, you know, to be able to do that, we have to, you know, uh, keep, 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 um, do everything we can. You excited to be back in the big house? Oh it's yeah. Wow. This, that's the best place in the world. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll be up there week three for the game against Arkansas state. So, uh, awesome. can't wait to watch you guys this weekend. Of course, you're not looking ahead, excited to watch you guys first Texas and then excited to be in the big house with you guys week three. So uh, really appreciate it, man. I love when we have offensive line. I love when we get just the trench play on this show. It's just so interesting and so fascinating and uh, really respect and admire uh, your just fortitude to continue pushing on and uh, excited to see what you do this year, Greg. So uh, thanks so much for joining. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Cool. All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in again. This is the lab presented by Wolverine. Uh, we appreciate you guys joining us as well. And uh, let us know in the comments. What do you like about offensive line play? I'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, of course, the easy stuff is the quarterbacks. We've heard a ton about that. Would love to hear from you guys as the fans, how much you appreciate the trench play in Ann Arbor. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys next week after the game. Go blue.